So, uh, right, well, if we make a start, so my name's Stuart, I'm the regional organiser from East Midlands. Um, is everybody just seeing me talking at the moment? Uh, is that what you're seeing, Mike? Yeah. Fantastic, that's marvellous, thank you. So, Mike is uh, one of our regional members, and um, I think it was probably about a year, 18 months ago, you said you were working on a sports panel, which quite interested me because um, as a professional photographer in the 80s, um, I think I just about kept up with my mortgage payments by photographing sport on a Sunday. We would literally go out onto the sporting fields and take group shots and then sell them black and white 10 by 8 prints for a pound a time. But I think things have changed a little bit since then. Um, so I'm going to be really interested to hear what Mike's been up to. So I'd like to hand over to him now and Mike, please tell me or tell us about your engagement with sports photography and your application for an associate to the Royal Photographic Society. Welcome. Okay, thank you. I say hello to a, a lot of friends and um, to new people who've dialed in for the first time. I'm surprised there are so many of you here on a lovely warm afternoon. Um, I will share my screen. It's going to be a um, a keynote presentation which hopefully will work well. Can I just check that you can now see shooting for an A? Yes we can Mike, we can see okay. the thumbnails down on the left hand side and then we can see the main picture. Now we okay. see the main picture fill the whole screen. Let me just adjust these things. If I look as if I'm not interested it's because I'm looking across to the left where I've got a second screen which has got my notes on. Uh, firstly, um, what I'd like to do, having said hello and thank you for coming, is to explain why sport and what type of sport. I've seen lots of very successful pictures of athletics and uh, other sports, but for me, uh, when I was at school I used to love cricket, I opened the batting so I was used to facing fast bowlers, so I must have had reasonably good reflexes and good anticipation. And in terms of photography, the things I really enjoy uh, are sports that involve a ball or a puck or a shuttle. Um, anything that gives me time to think, and golf is the one that comes to mind, I'm rubbish at playing. So obviously it's far better when I don't have time to think. The, the other thing I'd say is um, David Keep gave an excellent presentation a couple of weeks ago about project-based uh, photography where he visualizes what he wants to photograph and um, will then get people to uh, get, get the scene lit and everything else to, to actually get that shot. I'm, if you like, I'm the complete opposite. I would shoot what I see. Uh, I suppose I do like street photography, also like wildlife photography, flying birds, for example. It's the same sort of thing. I can anticipate usually what's going to happen and I can get a reasonable shot of it. When I have to think, I really don't do very well. Uh, we have a few members from Cambridge Camera Club uh, dialed in today, and I think most of you, or all of you, have got a heck of a lot to answer for, really. When I went to the first meeting, Anne Miles and David Hone came up, and Anne Miles said to me, oh, do come back, we need some younger blood. Well, I'm vain enough to have been persuaded by that and did say that I look a lot older now. So obviously it didn't work too well. Um, the other thing is the Cambridge Club had a group called Freshers, which was a bit like play school for photographers. You were given small projects and you were given gentle suggestions on how you might improve the uh, results. Anyway, I, I wasn't that fussed about sports photography. I hadn't practiced it since the 70s and then it was only uh, very poor stuff but i hope i get the name right danielle tutongi and might correct me later gave a brief talk about taking pictures of sport in um peterborough i think it was when she got talking to one of the professionals who said apply for a press pass which she duly did and she showed some of the pictures and i was encouraged i turned up uh, for the first my first race there uh, the lighting was quite good, which is unusual for street races. And um, I found that my camera just wouldn't cope at all. It wouldn't focus fast enough for cyclists coming 
down the straight straight at me. So I decided to focus on a point in the road and just hope that I got a reasonable composition when the riders came through. And out of that visit, I got one shot, which was fairly lucky. Uh, when I go back and look at these pictures, though, I cringe. I see all of these highlights around the uh, rider, which I might do something with now. Uh, but I was quite pleased I got the yellow jersey slap bang in the middle of the frame. So I, I was quite pleased with the results and it made me write off and ask for a press pass for some of the other events. Um, most of you, if you've got your A or are thinking of getting an A, may well have got an L first. Uh, I took a City and Guilds course. I actually just wanted to go on A course, but they were, that was full. So I was persuaded to go on the City and Guilds course uh, being told I didn't need to submit any of the projects unless I wanted to. But I did fairly well. The first year I got three distinctions, absolutely loved the uh, tutor and uh, loved taking pictures. Uh, it took me two years to get the, um, I think it's called a merit, um, which gave me another two points, which gave me 11, which meant that I was awarded my L. But I think that was a great shame because although the, there was a great emphasis on um, the art of photography, there wasn't a huge amount on the technical side. And equally, I'm not sure I listened very much. I didn't do any, I did virtually no darkroom work. So I was a little bit lazy, I suppose, in terms of processing. Um, I'm sure anyone else can tell you a lot more about the different levels of distinction, but I decided I'd have a go at the A panel partially because a lot of people at Cambridge were applying for an A and successfully getting their A's and I think, I can't remember the name of the group, it may have been, um, uh, no I can't remember, but basically you, you've got detailed critique of your work rather than compliments. Uh, when I started this journey back in 2013 you had fewer choices and I Sport really sat within the professional and applied photography category, which meant you were up against um, professional, for, uh, professional photographers. Uh, but now there are two groups and I think you could put sport into either of those groups, but I, I decided to carry on with the applied route. Uh, in, in trying to promote my photography and get press passes, I felt I needed a presence online. And I was lucky enough to be helping somebody marshal for the Eam Half Marathon. If you've not heard of it, it's supposed to be the second most difficult half marathon in the country. Unfortunately, like everything else, it's on lockdown. Uh, but fortunately, the marshalling post was towards the end, which meant all the runners were spread out. They were all in a good mood because if you've ever walked this route, it is very hilly and they haven't got too long to go before they could freewheel down back into the village. They were in good spirits. I must have taken pictures of at least 80% of all the runners. I put them on my site and then I uh, persuaded the organisers to put it on theirs. And over the next 12 months, I had three quarters of a million picture views just of the uh, half marathon. I didn't actually put it on there to get public notice. It was really just as a, a way of showcasing my work. Um, I'll be talking about ice hockey later. Um, that got a similar number of views. So over 12 months, I got one and a half million picture views. But as I say, I wasn't using it for that. Perhaps I should have used it uh, more effectively. I started uh, taking more cycling pictures. Um, not sure where this was. I think it might have been uh, Daresborough or Daventry, somebody around, somewhere around there. And it was a, an image I was really pleased with. I do like panned shots and I had lots of practice because these cyclists go round 40 laps rather than going to a Tour de Britain uh, stage where you just get one chance. I really liked it. I thought his face is nice and sharp. You've got the shadow there and there's good feeling of movement in the bike. Um, I did take this to the uh, club and get some feedback and it was, I wasn't going to name her, but, but as she's online, Anne Miles uh, looked at it and she said, oh, good panning, Mike, and plenty of room for the bike uh, to move into in the frame. But I don't like the fact that his legs straight 
obviously if a cyclist is canted over he's not pedaling and therefore that was one minor fail uh, but she said the most important thing is he's got a metal rod going through his head uh, so uh, not for the first time I realized that backgrounds were going to potentially be my biggest problem catching the moment was okay but uh, isolating the uh, the athlete was more of a problem um, in trying to get passes for places I don't know if any of you have seen any short track speed skating it's not a big sport in Britain when I went along to an event there were more competitors than there were in the crowd um, if you go to Korea, I think every secondary school has an ice rink because it's their national sport. So the fact we have skaters capable of possibly win winning medals is remarkable. But anyway, I wrote off and I got an email back almost immediately saying, I'm very sorry, I'm just leaving my job. I'll pass it on to my successor. And it must have taken nine months for me to actually get through to the successor to be allowed to go along and take some pictures. And I, I got some adequate results, never tried to put these into competition. I'm sure a judge would not like the numbers or the, the coloured helmets uh, much. The other problem I had was a camera, which is a Sony Alpha 900, uh, 25 megapixels for the time. It was a remarkable sensor, but it didn't have very good low light performance and anything over 800 ISO and it was struggling. Same time, Chris Fell, who's a member of Cambridge uh, and is the official photographer for Cambridge Rugby Club, they invited a few members to go along and try their hand at taking pictures of rugby. We were allowed to go anywhere around the pitch. I'll perhaps come back to that later. And um, I was quite pleased with this result. And uh, the club were reasonably pleased. They put it into a competition against another club and it got 17 points out of 20. So I thought, ah, there's not too much to this sports photography. It's, it's quite good. I think I could do this uh, more. And the club put it into a following competition against another club and the judge gave it 12 points. I think probably the score maybe was deserving more, deserves slightly more than the 12, but the judge didn't like all of the dis distractions in the background. And I think the image I submitted uh, actually had more highlights in the background there. So once again, backgrounds were a problem. I carried on, tried a few more. Uh, this is slightly better, but once again, shooting across the pitch. Um, now I tend to get behind the goals because it's much further between you, the subject, and then any background is quite a long way away. Equally, there was a car here. And if Ian Wilson is watching, who was giving me loads of advice as well. He'd probably spot a few artifacts over here where I've clumsily cloned out the car and put in some spectators from a, another picture, actually. When things weren't moving, uh, I had no problems at all with the camera gear I had. And by now I had received passes to be on the uh, course. I didn't actually go on the course during the races very often but it did mean you could be there before the start. And I've, I, I quite like some of the shots I managed to get for that. I, I did buy a um, Minolta 300mm uh, f2.8 lens. It's about 25 years old. It, it was about a quarter of the price of the new Sony equivalent. And if, you, if the subject wasn't moving or wasn't moving quickly, you could get some uh, great pictures. I don't think my current Canon 300 mil is any better in terms of resolution, colour and contrast. However, if you got uh, a, a finish like this that you wanted to capture, and this is the only finish in probably 12 street races I did, where you had a bunch of riders riding straight at you, the camera really struggled to focus fast enough, especially when the light was low. And um, this is at 1600 ISO. You can see a lot of noise on the picture and it made me, made me decide that if I wanted to succeed at this, I'd have to change my gear. On the basis of what I got to that point, I'm not sure I could have justified the expenditure that I then committed myself to. Um, I bought Canon um, 
the choice between Canon and Nikon was almost a, a flip of a coin. I just liked the balance of the, the 1DX and the 300 mil lens. I could, I could handhold that, it was beautifully balanced. I bought a lot of bits to go with it. And if you've ever heard of Mark Asplund, I've heard him talk a couple of times. And he does um, complain, is probably the right word, about um, people who've just received their redundancy money spending it all on camera gear and a very big camera bag. Uh, if I ever meet him, I think I'll show him my camera bag. I will only mention one accessory, that's that. Having spent quite a lot of time rubbing shoulders with professional photographers where they've got cameras over each shoulder on straps and one round their neck on straps, I struggled one to keep the, the cameras on my shoulders and also to stop them tangling. This I found brilliant, it takes a lot of strain off your back, it means you can carry two hefty cameras without uh, too much trouble, you can bring them up to your eye quickly. Okay, I won't mention equipment at all now. Um, David Keep mentioned in his project-based approach that he's very organised and I have to say although my photography is a bit, um, could appear a bit uh, slap happy, I was very organised in trying to make sure I got to as many events as possible to get to know my equipment and to get to know uh, different organisations and keep moving up through because basically I wanted to photograph the best possible athletes as close as I could get. Um, the only reason for having Ashover highlighted darker, they were the only people out of all of these who said no. And something I will point out, I was a bit miffed, I did supply images to all sorts of organisations. They were very reluctant to use them, I thought it was because it was a bit of a closed club, but in their shoes, if they had an official photographer who provided them with images over a number of years, for me to come in and perhaps uh, supply a number of images and then not bother going back wouldn't have done them good in the long run. Uh, Big Quelf show, this is the first example of where getting up close really did help. They did grant me a press pass and I was on a elevated, I think it was probably the way they awarded the prizes and this troupe of riders did actually perform to us. Um, I did put this into Cambridge Club annual competition. I was lucky the judge of that year was keen on sport and he congratulated me on catching this rider before he fell off. Well, of course he did get back on and uh, the a great troop of riders, but thankfully they were performing to us. Going back through my images, I cringe when I look at a lot of them. I spent five minutes yesterday trying to improve it. And um, I, I, I think, my uh, Lightroom and Photoshop technique has improved a bit since. Rugby, because I was dealing with the um, short track uh, team, I got in touch with their, I was in touch with their media company, who also looked after the Nottingham Rugby Club, which is uh, level up from Cambridge. And they played at, well at that time, they played at the Notts County ground. And I got one or two nice shots. Once again, not very well supported, so you really didn't want to have too much of a stand on show because it, wasn't, it didn't help a lot. And it, it did help having a slightly uh, higher grade of uh, rugby. Not a lot, I have to say, but it did help. The, um, I put this in the, the Cambridge Club competition and the judges like this one as well. A friend is the official photographer from Macclesfield Town who at the time were just below the um, League Division 2. So I went along and um, took pictures with him. You get very, very close to the action there. If you're behind the goal, you stretch your feet out, you're actually on the pitch. Uh, the floodlights there were not great. I've put this through uh, Topaz Denoise, which I think is brilliant. Sorry, Denoise AI. And for many pictures, it, it, it turns what I would have thrown away into something that's usable. Uh, I was told off because I didn't have a pass, uh, but for that level of league I, I wrote off and by return I got a pass. They were only really interested in making sure that I had insurance. 
Uh, I already had that uh, through uh, Hiscox, five million pound public indemnity, which is fine for this, but I, I don't know whether it would cover me if uh, Jamie Vardy fell over one of my feet. Uh, because of my contacts with the road racing, somebody who'd moved on said there was something um, on in London, the London Nocturne, would I be interested in going along to that? So I did, and I had photographed these penny farthing riders before. I haven't got a really decent picture of them. And when you're panning quite often, I don't know if you've experienced this yourself, their heads will go up and down. So even though parts, the, the handlebars are beautifully sharp, but he, he moved his head, unfortunately. Getting the hang of road cycle, some road cycling photography. They have a couple of laps before they start racing where they can actually put on a few faces for the uh, photographers. And I think this chap was doing precisely that. Um, in taking pictures, I started looking around and trying to see whether I wanted to um, also take pictures of, pictures of the preparations of the competitors and also of the racing. And I'm far less good at photographing the people than I am the racing, thing, I'm afraid. Um, but I, I'll come back to this in a minute. My problem is I, uh, I was a cycling nut, so I knew all of the photographers, uh, sorry, all of the uh, famous riders, and it was very difficult for me to separate fame from the quality of picture. This is Katie Archibald. At the time, she wasn't famous. And um, I, I thought at the time she, she would go places she subsequently got a gold medal in Rio as part of the uh, pursuit team. But she did fall off her motorbike at 70 miles an hour. Not long before that, um, damaged her cruciate ligament quite badly. And the um, uh, chief coach of the cycle team said, well, she's probably ruined her chances and she's not done the team much good. She, fortunately, she did recover and uh, she, um, subsequently has been successful in a number of things. Madison world champion, Omnium world champion, and um, quite a character. I think she would have done well at this year's Olympics. And one of my heroes, Ed Clancy, I suspect even though you, you may be interested in cycling, you've never heard of him, but he has three Olympic gold medals and was one of the, perhaps for me, the key member of the pursuit team. But fearless, he'd fallen off his bike, got back on and carried on riding to get points for his team. Uh, but he did have a problem before the 2016 Olympics. He had to have an operation on his back, which might have left him unable to walk, let alone ride. Three months later, he went to the Olympic qualifiers in London. Uh, the team went in a coach. He went in a taxi flat on his back. So once again, this picture means a lot to me, but in terms of picking pictures to go in my panel, I was advised that it probably wasn't quite up to scratch. If you can't get press passes, and this was in uh, Portugal, I discovered that um, um, the, was it, the tour of the Algarve stage was starting in the town where I was staying. I went, went to the tourist office and said, well, where's it, go, where's it going to start from? and that they didn't even know that there was a, a race going to be on. So I just hung around the, the town and waited until the, uh, the tour buses or the buses went past with all the bikes on and followed them and went to, to try and take pictures, but there was a security guard saying, you can't go in, where's your press pass? And having, I suppose, got used to it slightly, I said, well, I need to go and collect it, it's in the media tent. So he pointed me to the media tent and of course, once you're in, you don't get challenged. This is uh, Mark Cavendish, my absolute all-time hero, best sprinter probably ever, and um, winner of 32, 30 tour stages and 48 grand tour stages. And he finally got his Olympic silver medal, but a great hero. Once again, something I shouldn't include. I did spend a lot of time taking pictures of track cyclists. I got the contact through the road cycling. I just said, have you got any contacts? And they put me in touch with the Revolution series. You can just about make out Revolution there. Uh, over the next uh, 18 months, I probably covered 12 events. 
in uh, Manchester, London, Glasgow, and finally Derby, which is an excellent local facility for us. I did think that I'd get some great finishing line uh, photos, but quite often the, uh, the difference between first and second is uh, millimetres. But lots of white lines, lines on the track, and there's that metal bar again, um, made it quite difficult. But I do have to mention Laura Trott, who is totally fearless, has, uh, I think it is, four gold medals and no passes. She um, fell over twice in this race, remounted her bike and won. After that, she gave interviews and was smiling all over her face. A wonderful ambassador for the sport. Um, something else David Keat mentioned was that his way of getting into many of these things was to take pictures and then give them to the, the organisers. Uh, because this was being photographed by professionals, I would never ever uh, offer my pictures free. If somebody wanted to buy them, that's fine. And I would try to keep out of the way of the real professionals on the basis they needed to get the, the best pictures. I haven't mentioned Sir Chris Hoy, by that time he'd stopped riding, but he was a lot of these events. Jason Kenny, six gold and one silver, and Bradley Wiggins as well, five gold, one silver, two bronze. It probably was hero worship on my part, so I wasn't too objective. Coming back to the speed skating, over a period of about six months, they started using my images for their press releases, so they invited me to the farewell of the team going to the Olympics. And this is, this is only in as an illustration of something I've, I've learnt. I went to take some pictures and I would take pictures of how they formed up for a, a photo. Uh, Mark Fear, the Nottingham Post photographer, turned up, spent five minutes taking some pictures, then got the team together, sat them on the uh, trunks that had got all their gear in, sorted them out, put them in order and took a picture. So the only reason I have this is thanks to him. So I do spend a little more time trying to organise things now. But this is more my, my sort of shot, just taking a picture of something that's happened. I did get some adequate shots of speed skating. I didn't, I've never put any into a competition. Um, I, I think I would have to perhaps do a David Keep, which is to uh, cut the um, skater out, do content aware film shrink him down a bit, move him back and perhaps have another uh, skater here. Uh, but uh, I did quite enjoy it, but didn't get any really good results in my view. Uh, because of being at that venue, which is the Nottingham Arena, I thought it could be good to take pictures of ice hockey. Um, I didn't think I'd be able to do it. So I sent an email off to the uh, club and half an hour later, the general manager gave me a phone call and said, yeah, come along. So um, I then started taking, I think I went to four events, ice hockey pictures. And if anybody wants to improve their sports photography, my recommendation would be don't take pictures of ice hockey. It's the most difficult sport I have ever photographed. The lighting conditions are quite awkward. Uh, basically, I, I ended up by setting my shutter speed, aperture and ISO and because it was pretty well lit, there were darker corners. Um, I didn't have to worry at all about exposure. Um, the other problem is that puck is black, so it's difficult to see. It's hard to see against the players and the ice itself can look quite grungy and you do get a lot of hoardings behind. I've actually clumsily tried to change this because it had um, something like, in orange, something like GMB behind there. Okay, because I wasn't the official photographer, I could go around and do anything. And I, I did try to capture lots of other shots, get shot get and get that atmosphere. And the general manager quite liked the results. The action shots weren't brilliant. As you can see, the ice looks a bit grungy. At that point, I hadn't really got my settings sorted. Luckily, Panthers uh, won the cup. And here they are celebrating having won it. They've thrown their gloves off, they've thrown their sticks in the air and the goal is left all his gear on the goal. I did get a shot. This is the, the standard shot, if you like, that you were expected to get. So that was the end of the ice hockey. I was quite keen 
to uh, feature it in my panel, but I was persuaded that maybe it wasn't the right thing to do. At that stage, all I had was cycling images. I applied for an advisory, advisory day in Cambridge. <laughs> uh, everybody who's been involved with helping me and advising me knows that I'm not necessarily the most organised of person. And in, as a slight excuse, we had moved house, so I was fairly busy trying to get things sorted out there. And because I hadn't had time to get the printing done, I submit, submitted my images as projected. And that was uh, probably around about May in Cambridge in 2014. So I was amongst friends. I prepared a statement. I, my apologies, I don't think this is my uh, first statement. But the important thing is, uh, don't worry reading it because you'll see most of it again, is to describe what you wanted from your panel and to prove with your panel that that's what you've delivered. Uh, John Bogpit, uh, far better photographer than me, uh, who got a, a fellowship for his uh, photography, I think, of uh, Paralympic sport, uh, passed this information on to me. You don't need to read it, but basically was images that are liked by a camera magazine or by the uh, rugby club for their programme or by ice hockey for their programme may well not be uh, the right sort of picture to submit in a panel. Um, I think most definitely I'm in grave danger of picking pictures that mean something to me rather than mean something to somebody who's not a sports photographer. Right, um, Anne thought this was reasonably okay because there is a bit of movement in the foot here. I was advised, because I did this, take this along to the uh, critique group, this was a red top, I think, so I did turn it down, but if I was doing this again, I'd probably take those highlights out completely and do something with it, this bright lighting. And as to the yellow lines, well, I don't know. Um, this, I quite like this. I, even as a non-sports photographer, you might appreciate it. I don't think, though, you'd appreciate the burnt out highlights up here. Um, I did actually plan this shot. There was only one place on the whole route where you could get all of the riders in together. They only go round once, uh, so I didn't have too many opportunities. But once again, I think I could have worked harder on the background and certainly done something with this here. Uh, this is popular for me. I like it because I, I got very wet taking it and my 5D Mark III actually stopped working because it got so wet. If I was going to put this in now, I'd probably work on some of this distracting information. Um, I might describe this now as a make weight picture, and certainly that's clumsy work there. I don't think this was the version I've submitted though. This is the sort of picture I love, uh, but I, I think it would be high risk to submit it as it part of a panel. Equally, you've got some bright highlights that are distracting. Similarly with this one, you've got the no entry sign up there and that white line. I tried to get a mixture of pictures, tried to get up close, tried to uh, get a picture of the commentator who's quite famous, but this is a bit too bright and um, out of focus probably. Unfortunately, this isn't the original. I think there was a better version in the panel. Uh, this is a picture I put in because He's Klaswegian. I love these bikes. He's a great character. It was for the Revolution series. He's got his Revolution magazine there and People Make Glasgow. It was really taken to get it into their next copy of their magazine, uh, but it meant so much to me, I put it in and that was a mistake. I'll talk more about that one later. I do look at other people's work and at the Manchester Arena, there are pictures of all of the famous Olympians virtually in this pose. I've tried flash, I've tried all sorts of things. Um, this is one of the better ones, but I find the lines quite distracting. And once again, this is one I put in for cycling purists because he's ahead or behind the line to tell her whether she's ahead or behind schedule. And this one was to complete the set, basically to show the arena 
uh, but perhaps if the rider had been there it would have been better. So there, there we are, that was my first panel. I got lots of advice on how many pictures to put in each row, whether it to be two rows or three rows, and any, what number of pictures to put in each row. And I must stress at this point, I did not have a clue about how to sequence a panel. It was like getting uh, blood out of a stone, me putting a panel together. Uh, I was advised, um, Ian Wilson did say, you may well find having pictures all the same orientation and the same size and not printed too big will work in your favour because it doesn't give the assessors anything to dislike. Um, as you can see, I'm very good at taking advice, but not necessarily heeding all of it. Uh, I have to say the day didn't go very well. And I was um, uh, quite distraught by the end of it, I would say. Thankfully, Anne Miles did make some notes and give me some feedback afterwards. Um, she brought out the positives, which was really good and um, did say that it probably needed more variety. The, the, the assessor of the day did say really it needed more variety. I think he picked about six that he felt were okay, but said you, you really need to go back to the drawing board. Having them projected didn't help. You know, I think you need a very, very high quality projector and Cambridge had the best they, they could at the time, but um, blown out highlights don't do you any favors on projected images. Okay, I had already booked uh, an assessment day down in Bath, which I postponed and then cancelled, but I did go along to see what it was like. And um, there was a very distinguished panel uh, of uh, professional photographers. They silently viewed the pictures, had a preliminary vote. Uh, two or more assessors gave their comments. They repeated the vote and then you got the decision. Um, as I say, the category was professional and applied, and there were a lot of wedding photog photography um, panels there, some really good ones. Uh, the assessors were very, very careful. They inspected images quite closely. I thought it was a look for pixelation or uh, out of focus pictures, but I was assured that it was to look for uh, banding or uh, colour cast in the prints. And there was one sports panel, admittedly you're quite a long way away when you're at the uh, assessment day, but there was a sports panel which I really liked. Somebody spent a lot of time and thought putting into, time and thought into it, trying to get a panel that was different. And I thought it would pass. They had their first vote, then they had their second vote and the chairman called the whole group out of the room and they had quite a long discussion. They examined two or three of the prints again and the, reluctantly came to the conclusion that they, they thought perhaps the uh, it was quite a small sensor or quite a, a small crop of the pictures that the, the the quality wasn't quite up to it which is a great pity uh, to compensate for my disappointment the general manager of nottingham panthers rang me up and said would i be the official photographer for 2014-15 um, I didn't give it too much thought at the time, except I said I didn't want to take pictures of the uh, mascot, of the puck being dropped, of a prizes being awarded afterwards, because it, that wasn't what I was good at and I, I was really worried I wouldn't be able to do it justice. He said, no problem, I get other people to do that. Uh, that was in May. I knew that I got till mid-September to really sharpen up my processing. So I could submit 50 images overnight, and I could also supply 10 images on the night for the website. Uh, and I, I planned from the middle of August to start practicing so that I could um, be ready for mid-September. I got a phone call from the general manager who was in France on holiday, saying, Mike, we've been selected to represent Great Britain in the uh, Champions League. And um, uh, we need you to supply images, mug shots of every player and a team shot of every player. Well, those of you who know me know that I, don't, I have never done uh, studio photography, portrait photography, and I was given three days notice to do it. 
luckily I had a friend who lived in Chesterfield who got a master's in photography and all the gear and I said would you like to come along and help me please and you'll you get the opportunity of taking pictures of some high quality uh, athletes she said okay but then the day before she rang me and said sorry I don't want to do it but you can borrow, <laughs> you can borrow my gear uh, so can I just ask has somebody got their microphone off mute if you could mute your microphone please I'll be be very grateful um, so I had turned up we I had a changing room where I could take the pictures and I set the kit up I went very early so I could practice I'd ask Chris Fell who has done this regularly for Cambridge Rugby Club and he said well you won't get long get your lighting all fixed up tape a cross on the floor tell them to stand there and take your picture and that's basically what I did I did have a backdrop and I did have a light on the uh, player and one on the backdrop and I just about got an okay set of results next request from the uh, general manager Mike we also need to, a team shot bear in mind I'd only met two of these players before virtually all of them were changed from the previous year and they just had a very heavy training session and I think you can probably tell from their extra expressions they didn't necessarily want to be there and the other thing word of warning you normally get one blinking idiot in every shot and fortunately I'd got more than one shot and he he, he had his eyes open on the other one, so I photoshopped him into that. So that was the fir first hurdle taken. The next one was uh, the general manager rings me and said, Mike Getty are handling all of the images for this. You're going to have to provide them with images on the night uh, for uh, immediate use. So I got in touch with Getty and they I said they would send me instructions. This is all there was in the email so I ring them up showing my naivety and they said yes that is a picture if you open up the picture there's metadata in there that will have pre-populated the information we need for you to send back to us when you send the images so they pre-populated the, the game and you just then have to say this is Mike Paul scoring the winning goal blah 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 I never used metadata before so that was another first so for the European Cup, first game, I had to provide, I had also arranged with Nottingham Post to sell them images. Uh, so I was supplying four lots of pictures, three of them on the night and one overnight for uh, use for the programme. Fortunately, I didn't have the wit to get too nervous. So I didn't realise just how hard it would be. I uh, had to send 20 to 25 images to uh, the, uh, the agency, JPEG, maximum one and a half megabytes, so not particularly high resolution, but definitely caption. If you couldn't capture, caption the image, you couldn't send it. Uh, I mistakenly shot in RAW for the first uh, game, and therefore it took me too long to load the images, but I did subsequently save RAW to a second card so I could work on them later. This is the place where you go to take the pictures and normally you sit there to take the pictures. So most of the image you see of an ice hockey game will be taken from that point. These are the umpires. One of them in, in a European game, you get three umpires, two to, one to cover each end of the court and one to skate up and down in front of the photographers, I think, so that they can't get decent shots. I, I tried all sorts of places and I photographed from up there. Up here, as you can see, I'm, I'm up in one of the boxes here and also from the roof, which is a bit scary. Uh, first game, a chap called Lawrence Griffiths came locally from Getty to take pictures, the official pictures for them, which is a great blessing because I didn't get mine ready in time for them. But it was good to watch a professional working. He spent a lot of time getting the coach here and something in the background. Uh, to complete the picture. I looked at his images on the Getty site and um, I'm not ashamed to say basically I copied him with this particular image. Uh, I'm sorry I should say that he after the game probably spent half an hour having captioned everything and sent it off. 
I was still there three hours later, struggling to get everything done. Things got better, uh, but getting shots of goals is a real challenge. As I say, because of the puck, getting all of the players in focus is also very, very difficult. And getting the puck in the position where you realise that he probably is a goal is quite hard. Even then, I've had to take out distracting information at the back. So I did go up in the roof. I uh, had a remote camera, which I triggered with, um, basically on my camera. So as I was shooting with my camera, it was also firing the picture in the roof. Um, I didn't perfect it for this shot. The focus isn't quite spot on, uh, but it's something I would like to repeat, but you're not allowed to go up there now for, say, health and safety reasons, whether it's the health and safety of the players or the photographer, I don't know. Um, supplying the Nottingham Post was really good. It got me contacts elsewhere and I did get a few back page pictures and this was one of them. It's very unusual. This is uh, Panthers goalie. This is Sheffield Steelers outfield player who was a bit of a villain. It's very unusual for the goalie to have a go at an outfield player. Uh, the general managers did tell me that the money shot was get, getting this flying off the back of the nets because you've timed your picture just right. And they're all three in focus. It's just a pity they're not facing me. Uh, at the end of the season, I was getting slightly better with my photography. You get four teams, unfortunately, Panthers weren't one of them. So I wanted to be an official photographer for one of the other teams. I wrote to all four. And uh, Hull wrote back and said, well, as it happens, our photographer can't make it. Yes, come along and be our official photographer. So I did. It's great fun. It's almost like a carnival weekend. You get four games in two days, probably uh, six hours of photography. Oh no, probably eight hours of photography. And um, this is the Hull team. Unfortunately, none of the team were told that I was their official photographer. So I got some interesting looks which probably made for better shots and uh, this is the press conference afterwards when they just lost sadly meaningful picture for me because Hull announced after that that they were withdrawing from the leagues because they couldn't get funding so I got got a few more shots One, you, you may notice the ice is looking a bit cleaner now but even when you get a goal being scored quite often the puck uh, gets obscured with ice or something else. I suppose I could have replaced the puck with a, a clean one, but I, I should stress no ball puck uh, had been tampered with at all in any of these uh, photos. I did work at getting pictures from behind. I explained earlier that if the uh, the background is far enough, far enough away, it's far less distracting. And luckily they put in a new piece of plexi here for this weekend. And, and I'm and I'm um, right next to Baz here, who was there to count how many goals on shot. So I stood on the platform next to him. Luckily, we got on well, and he didn't mind me being there. That's probably the best shot I've got from ice hockey. You've still got problems with reflections and markings on the glasses. So if anybody's joined and not got their microphone on mute, uh, could you put it on mute, please? I did get some interesting shots. I spotted these Sheffield supporters. Unfortunately, the light wasn't very good, but I quite like the group. And it, one of the things you're expected to do if you're there as an official photographer is take pictures of the celebrations. And that, that one I quite, quite liked. Okay, I carried on with rugby, took a few more pictures. As you can see, not having a crowd makes it much more difficult. But I, I was improving with my Photoshop techniques and um, created this. I have put this through uh, Topaz Denoise. It's still a bit noisy, but I felt as if my uh, technis ne uh, technical skills were improving. Well, the, one of the other things you're expected to do is get shots of the coach. And the Nottingham Panthers uh, general manager liked pictures like this, which were landscape where you effectively had a portrait on the right hand side because he'd put it on the program and basically fold down the middle. So you had this interest on the front, but it folded back to the back. This might have been an interest of interest in Nottingham Rugby, who used quite a few of my pictures in the programs. 
but, but unfortunately this is the away team. Uh, Chesterfield, I asked for a press pass for that and they granted me one. It didn't really make a lot of difference, except I could get onto the pitch at the end of the game. Luckily, they just won the league, so they were having quite a celebration. But another tip, if you're going to go to any event, get there really early. I normally do, and I plan to get there three quarters of an hour before the game. Unfortunately, it took a quarter of an hour to park, and unbeknownst to me, they moved the game forward half an hour. So now, although that, if they hadn't got it on the website, do double, double check. Uh, knowing your sport, David Keep said it takes him three visits anywhere to get the hang of things. And I, I would agree with that completely. And one of the sports I had nothing, no idea about is uh, horse riding. This is a three day event at Burley. I had no interest in it whatsoever, but my daughter-in-law wanted it wanted to go as a birthday present so I went along with her and she she's a very keen rider understands horses and I think you'd agree the timing there is pretty good that's taken single shot not on spray and prey uh, and the timing is absolutely spot on and of course you probably guessed my daughter took those pictures I did however persevere I got a press pass for Chatsworth and got chatting to an official photographer there who got a very comfortable spot sitting on the back of his uh, uh, boot taking pictures of Chatsworth House in the background and this fence and it turns out that he was paid by Chatsworth to take a picture of every rider going over this fence this pose all day for two days. I had considered this is a way of perhaps getting into uh, photographing particular types of sports, but I decided there might be easier ways. Um, back at Burley, I got a better idea of what, what I wanted to do. And uh, this one I, I was quite pleased with. Uh, his, his head and shoulders are quite nice and sharp, which presumably means it's a very uh, steady ride for the rider. And uh, that's another one. Because my daughter had most of my gear, all I had was a 300mm lens, so I had to choose very carefully where I shot from. Mike, did you want to stop saying about five minutes for a break? I've just finished. Well done. That's it. Fantastic. <laughs> so it's at the end of the yeah. first session. That's the end of the first session, oh. and uh, well, coming up is part deux. Okay, well. Would you like to um, unshare your screen? And, um, Certainly. Fantastic. Well, that, that, was, that was fantastic. Okay. They do say that timing in sport is vital, don't they? But just as <laughs> I asked, you were there, so well done. Um, so Thank you. Right, um, sorry, I've been reading some of the notes. I see we've got a, a sailing photographer. We've also got uh, a, a professional sports photographer. So uh, perhaps hand over to him for the second part. Uh, but anyway, uh, cricket. I used to love my cricket. Um, what does it say? Hand-eye coordination and anticipation are really important in cricket. And I decided I would I'd give it a go trying to photograph it. Anne Miles did actually point me to a, a panel submitted by, a successful panel submitted by Angela Davison and I got in touch with her and she's been very supportive uh, of, of my panels since then. Uh, she, I didn't feel that I had enough images in cricket alone to, to try that, but I, d I did decide to give it a good go. I first went to Chesterfield, there's a lovely little ground in Chesterfield and I thought, Nice background is going to work well, but that wasn't the case. It's amazing how many distracting things you can have when a, when a game is actually yeah, started. I did actually, I, I haven't had a go at um, club judges and I won't because I have a huge respect for them. They, they expose themselves to abuse and can only ever please one or two of the photographers on the night. Uh, but this has been in two competitions, both judges, both judges, said well I wonder if that ball was really there and there has been no ball tampering none at all uh, do you need a ball in the picture I don't know but this this is here 
to show what sort of problems you get with a background unless I did a huge amount of work. Uh, it was never ever going to work and I suppose I would have had to put a ball in there to, to give it drama. You can get quite nice and close at Chesterfield which helps and when you've got spin bowlers on you obviously get close fielders. This looks almost like uh, a practice. Uh, there were unfortunately small crowds by the time this was probably in the third or fourth day. So once again, I didn't really get, get what I wanted from that location. So I got in touch with um, Nottinghamshire Cricket Club. I, I did explain that I'd supply pictures to Nottingham Post and shot for uh, the uh, Nottingham Panthers, which probably helped my case and um, got free access anywhere in Trent Bridge, a press, press pass and got one or two okay shots but this was the only shot on the first day i think yorkshire scored 300 and odd for two and there was just the one catch so i was quite pleased i got the catch uh, but this isn't the right version i've done something very strange with this and um Anne miles doesn't like green anyway and the green's wrong on this and somebody else i i've been helped with is Andy Smith at Matlock Club, a professional printer, uh, did point out to me my final panel needed more work because the greens, some of them were some way off. Those of you who regularly print know greens are perhaps the biggest challenge. But anyway, I showed this to uh, one of the journalists in the um, press box and I think the Nottingham Post used this on their website. Um, trying all sorts of angles around the ground, still problems with blessed hoardings behind. Uh, this one I quite like. One of the biggest problems I find with cricket is getting light on the cricketer's face. Uh, this is uh, okay of a sort. Uh, one of the things I learned to uh, photograph and watch very carefully is the wicket keeper. Generally they're the, the most colourful character on the cricket pitch and interestingly this chap Vessels is also a wicket keeper, presumably the reserve wicket keeper, who did a lot of close feeling and was very athletic and I quite like this image, spent quite a bit of time processing it as black and white but um, it didn't fit in with my panels black and white. Um, my only complaint about professional photographers, if, as I explained earlier, I'll try and keep my, uh, keep out of the way of a professional photographer because they're, they're making their money out of it. I was not making money out of it for this, although I was supplying um, images if people wanted them, um, I wasn't providing anything for an agency. And I decided this was going to be a great spot when the spin bowlers came on. And sure enough, they did. And we have vessels here again, avoiding the ball. And you've got a nice bit of dust rising off the ground. Um, Lawrence Griffiths, the um, Getty man, actually came and sat three seats away from me. Looked slightly sheepish that he was so close. And I thought nothing more of it. When I got home, uh, I looked on the BBC website to see what pictures had been picked for the day. And I saw what was virtually my picture he had uh, submitted his and it had been used by the BBC. Something I will say is that Getty generally have contracts in most sports to get special treatment. They also have contracts with a lot of the media outlets so that there's an annual fee so each incremental picture that they use doesn't cost them any more money. So they, they have a head start really. Um, if you go to uh, sporting events as a professional photographer, you get a pass and you get escorted normally to a window windowless room underneath the stand and fairly cramped, uncomfortable seats. But on this occasion, uh, this is the press room at uh, Trent Bridge. And these are all the uh, well-known reporters. As you can see, you get a continuous supply of tea and coffee. You get lunch in the restaurant, which is just through a door through there. And in the afternoon, you get scones, cream and strawberry jam. 
I've not been back yet, but I was, was hoping to go this year, not necessarily for the cricket. Uh, one of the shots I nearly got, this is side bottom. This is Yorkshire winning the league for the first time in, since I was a young lad, probably. No, maybe not that long. Um, so you've got some of the famous England players behind as well. And he's taken six for 30. I made the mistake of not having the, the uh, scoreboard sharp. He's been awarded the match ball. So that might have been a sellable picture had I got that sharp. Um, because they'd won the cup, the cup was being presented on the pitch and champagne was flowing and certain famous people, this is uh, Dickie Bird, chairman of Yorkshire, very pleased with themselves. But I didn't quite get the right side of the ropes for this particular game and um, was therefore just on the wrong side of the ropes and a lot of the players' wives came out to watch the fun with their families and I was next to somebody who kept on looking over her shoulder back up at the pavilion and I thought this is strange she didn't look very happy and it turned out it was her husband who was up there on the pavilion the veranda with the captain the uh, director of cricket and one other person looking as if they'd lost the game and I knew that the captain had been uh, banned from playing in the game because of alleged racial comments and that he wouldn't be allowed onto the pitch to uh, accept the cup. So here are his uh, colleagues showing solidarity when they, they really should be jumping up and down on the pitch. And I thought this might be newsworthy. I'd been courting a press agency and I got in touch with them as quickly as I could and said I might have a sellable picture, sent them up to him. He actually captioned them and sent them out and they were bought by a couple of papers so I got a bit of money for that but far more importantly he took me on as one of his photographers. He'd said previously send me examples of your photographs and I hadn't got round to that so I said to him well can I be a photographer? He said well you already are and that made an enormous difference and uh, um, Mike Harris, who's uh, watching today, said I was very lucky. He's absolutely right. Less than 15 months after deciding I was going to take sports photography seriously, I was shooting for an agency and also I was the official photographer for Nottingham Panthers. How it happened, I don't really know. It certainly wasn't based on the, the quality of the images up to that point. So I was taken on by sport pics. Um, those of you who've done it know, but it's this fair amount of pressure. You're asked to load your images, usually on the pitch, supply the first goal, first celebration, first yellow card, first red card, hopefully there aren't any, second goal and so on, during the game and then at the end of the game to send more images. Uh, to do that obviously you've got to select the images. Uh, when I started I was probably taking a thousand pictures of an event, of a, of a game. Uh, I chopped that down quite a lot on the basis it took too long to get through and I spent less time spraying and praying and more time maybe taking a burst of three or four pictures to get the one I wanted but it still took quite a long time. The next thing is you have to caption them so you have to know who, who you've taken the picture of and if there's a tackle who's tackled them. You have to send them off uh, quite often you have to, the, there will be wireless Wi-Fi in some stadiums, if not you've got to link your phone up to send the images off. And one thing that you do have to work against with virtually all of these events is that Getty will probably be supplying their images via a network cable or transmitting from the camera to someone else who's editing those pictures and sending them off and they could well be on the editor's desks within minutes. You may miss other events while you're busy cap cropping, captioning and tweaking your, your images, but whatever happens you're not allowed to edit them, you cannot move the ball or anything else, otherwise that would be the last game you ever cover. You also have to spend your time at half time and after the match going through your images and sending them off. It used to uh, impress me that Getty could be packed and off 
within half an hour of the end of the game and I was still slogging away trying to process. Through the agency, the first email I got was, would you like to photograph diving? It's at the Olympic Park, it's the World Diving Championships 2015. And if you've been, it's a very impressive venue. Uh, stunning building. Uh, the crowds were all at this end to watch the diving, which is all here. As you can see, it's quite um, messy. So getting clean backgrounds was a bit of a challenge. Uh, but was it, it was great fun, good facilities were laid on. So there was a place to go and process your images. And you were allowed to go anywhere as long as you didn't, well, almost anywhere, as long as you didn't move uh, when the diver was preparing to dive. The backgrounds, however, were a bit of a challenge. I did manage to find certain bits, though, within the venue that had a plain or plainish background. This was quite a good spot because there was a window up there and the light was coming down and illuminating the divers quite nicely. I confess there was a diving rail, handrail, just here, which I have removed. I did ask the, uh, the agency what sort of images are popular, what, what might sell. He said, people diving into the water is quite good. So I, I worked hard at that and uh, heavily processed this one to try and get the, the splash effect that I wanted. Um, but my best, my biggest selling photograph ever came from this event. Somebody obviously stripped off and ran up the steps. So there was quite a hubbub in the crowd. So I knew something was happening, but I was waiting to get a picture of Tom Daly. Here, here he is um, protecting himself. Uh, diving into the water with him sharp but the background blurred and I didn't have the speed of thought to change the shutter speed so I got one shot of the guard trying to stop this chap and one of the chap diving into the water. I think it was an error group who used this and I got a reasonable amount of money for this because there were no other ph photographers in the right place to catch it. So my worst photograph is my best earner. Um, you never know who you can take pictures of, and I think Clyde Downs, who I don't think is watching today from Cambridge Club, told uh, Trevor Lee, someone who is, don't throw your pictures away, you never know, they might become famous. This is not quite in that category. I didn't do anything with it because of this underneath, and I didn't know much about him. It's Jack Lauer. Since then I have processed it, and it was one of my options for my panel. Um, went on and got two goals in Rio. So I thought that Tom Daly was the, the real attraction, but, but in fact this, this would have been a, a better picture. The other image that the agency told me might work quite well is of water spray. Uh, Paul Sanwell, um, professional sports photographer from Cambridge, um, has done diving photos as well. He said it's unusual for players for divers to have their hair as wet as that they normally dry them off their heads off and I think this was actually must have been a practice dive because he hadn't toweled off. <laughs> they come in twos I suppose. The next email was would you like to photograph the World Cup rugby? I should say I'd already written off to Leicester Tigers because that was my uh, home team and had been one of the best, if not the best, club, uh, club rugby clubs in the country for a long, long time. I used to go and watch it, and I was actually our uh, games master, played for them. I, so I had a reasonable understanding of rugby, played in the second row, so you didn't need a brain, you just needed a bit of brawn. Uh, but um, I said yes, please, put my name down for the first England game, and I was mildly surprised when I didn't get a press pass for that. But instead of that, I got a pass for the first game between uh, New Zealand and Argentina at Wembley, which was quite an experience. And in the queue to get my uh, placemat, if you like, there were 300 um, journalists, roughly. Sorry, 150 journalists and about 160 photographers there. And you had to join a queue. If you were Getty or Agence Press or some of the other big agencies, 
you went up first and got your spots. Then if you were shooting for uh, media for the countries involved, so New Zealand and Argentina, they went up next. Then the national dailies went up. And then after that, the freelance photographers went up, um, took what was left. And I thought, oh dear, I'm not going to get a very good spot here. But I actually got spot number three. So Getty were number one, AP were number two, and I was number three. So I thought, oh, I might get some good pictures here. It's better than I thought. Eventually I covered, sorry, if somebody may not have their, their mic on mute, I, I thought that um, I'd, I'd get some good pictures and I, I covered seven games in all, uh, five in the um, leagues before the uh, quarterfinal, semifinal and final. And um, I asked in requesting passes, one of the people allocating the passes, is there a chance of me getting to a, a quarterfinal? And she said, well, the more games you cover in the qualifiers, the more you ch better chance you have of getting into the quarterfinals. So I covered as many as I could. Three at the Leicester King Power Stadium, which was great for me because I'm a, a Leicester City fan. You, if you can't see behind, I've, I've got a bit of Leicester City stuff up there. I've been supporting them since about 1960. So three games at Leicester was great. I also photographed at the Etihad Stadium in Manchester and uh, Milton Keynes, which is a nice venue. And finally at the Millennium Stadium in Wales for the two quarterfinals. Um, I didn't know until two days before the game that I'd got passes for those two games. So I tried to book a hotel in Cardiff naively and the cheapest room I could find was 500 pounds. So I was toying with the idea of driving there and back both days, but luckily my, uh, my cousin's daughter had a place and I stayed with her and her partner. So that saved me probably a lot of trouble. And um, in terms of sporting events and being near your heroes, being this far away, it was about this far away from um, a fantastic stadium, incredible crowd because this was the island game it was like a home game with the roof shut the atmosphere was fantastic if i'd forgotten my um cameras that day it wouldn't have worried me too much uh, i did manage to get one england game unfortunately by then they they weren't going to qualify um i put this in quite deliberately i do have a better version because i shot jpeg and raw this is not really burnt out but this is the sort of result that was coming out of camera. Uh, this was very nicely <laughs> exposed, but the shoulders weren't. Try to get pictures where you can almost see the player thinking, not just straight collisions. Um, this is one that didn't quite make my panel. Once again, one of my real favorites because of the boot that's come off, which isn't stopping him trying to get past the last line of defense. Once again, player thinking of which way to go. I think this was at Leicester, uh, one of the few games I took in Sunshine. It can be really challenging. If I thought about it more, I might have shot from the other end so that I was shooting, getting rim light around the player's head and also having a crowd in shadow behind. A um, few close-ups that I got, once again, I, that is not burnt out, that's just straight out of the camera. A uh, few shots I quite liked. I have to say the crowds were wonderful. I've got loads of pictures of happy supporters. Try to avoid taking pictures of the unhappy losers at the end. Uh, <laughs> another picture in the category that I was warned against including. Uh, if you know the referee, it's Nigel Owen, the most famous, I think the most famous rugby referee in the world with Dan Carter, who at the time was the most famous fly half. And I just like the angles, even this point leading up to the ball, the ball's nice in the frame, it's in the right place. I did put this into a competition and the judge said, well, I think I'd have cloned that out, which is the T that's leaping off the ground. And you've got some uh, spots there that I might clean up. But the biggest criticism was that you couldn't see his eyes. I'll come back to that in a minute. I did think I'd get a lot more pictures of 
tries with the try scorer coming straight at me. But if you think about it, the odds of you getting that shot are maybe one in, uh, I don't know, one in a thousand maybe. This was the closest I got. I love this with a hand almost under the ball. Is he going to touch down or is he going to be declared a, a scrum at five yards? Or whatever, I think it might be a 25 dropout actually. But I thought I would have had to remove all of these characters and equally, I didn't know whether I, I wanted to spend that sort of time. I said before that you have to caption your things and I knew this was Devin Toner even without looking at the number on his back. Rugby's not as helpful as football, they don't put the numbers on the front of their shorts. You can't see the numbers here so if I was going to submit this I'd have to go back through image, earlier images and later images to see if I could identify the two players. Um, I did shoot a couple of games involving uh, Maori teams and they did have photographs of every player in the program but one particular team had had their pictures taken close clean shaven but they'd all grown beards for the game so I really struggled with identifying anybody in that one. Football this was my ultimate goal um, I've been a Leicester supporter for a long time and this is the short of what shot I had imagined I'd get. I think some of you might recognise Roy of the Rovers, Tiger Comics, if you like. If you look you can see his eyes, he's looking exactly where the ball's going. You've even got a swoosh, I wouldn't be able to get that obviously. Both feet off the ground, lovely pose, that's what I imagined. This is the sort of thing that I got. If we look at the background, high-vis jackets are a curse. They really are a curse. Um, because I wasn't processing this for anything, I hadn't taken that out. But this is actually um, uh, the second goal for Leicester against Bruges as they qualified for the quarter cup, quarter final of the, um, of the, sorry, the, the European Cup, basically. Uh, I was quite pleased with the picture, but it doesn't really do too much for me. Fab fabulous volley and uh, went flying into the neck. net. Um, I have tried now to get pictures of supporters and because a number of clubs have seats that match the colour of their supporters I thought this might make quite a good shot. Chatted to this chap for a little while. I suspect he was quite a lad in his day, been supporting Wolves since he was a boy. Sent this off to the agency who fired back almost immediately, yeah, that's okay, what's his name? But unfortunately, by then I'd, I'd moved on to somewhere else. So in the next game, I got a photograph of this chap, and I have to say, one of the things I really enjoy now when I go to a football match is getting to know some of the supporters. And Bill Shaw here, uh, we reminisced about Stanley Matthews, and I'd seen him play, and um, really nice chap. And of course, he, he matches the, uh, the seats quite nicely. Also, you're expected to get profile pictures. Uh, this is uh, Morgan, Leicester's captain at the time. Tremendous character, and I think one of the main reasons why Leicester won the league. Yeah, I think he, he helped bond the team and was a really strong character. Uh, I've got a lot of pictures of uh, managers who've now moved on, including this gentleman here, uh, but um, that was something I noticed all of the uh, agency photographers were doing. Some grounds, excuse me, some grounds you weren't allowed to get anywhere near. Uh, this is um, Huddersfield, who were much more generous in letting you move around the pitch. Leicester aren't all that helpful. Uh, Stoke is a great gown, ground to go to and provides the best lunches. Um, I do quite like catching uh, pictures before the game and these are two of the strongest characters in the current team. This is a turncoat who's gone to Manchester United, I won't name him. Uh, but I do quite like capturing um, footballers, they are some of the best athletes in sport. Sometimes they can look very balletic, sometimes very powerful and they're usually very quick-witted as well. It's unusual, I found it very hard anyway, 
to capture images where you've got the uh, chap wanting to shoot the defender and the goalkeeper. Usually you get uh, someone in the way or only two out of those three or only one out of those three. Uh, sometimes you get the chance to uh, get uh, really close to the opening. In Leicester, you're not normally allowed behind the goals, so you have to choose your spot along the, down the side of the ground. Sometimes you get somebody shooting for goal, but they're a long way out. You have got the crowd starting react. Unfortunately, Albright is too far away for me to get him sharp. So just to prove it was a goal, I got the uh, ball in the back of the net. Sadly, the goalkeeper was too far away and somewhere in between the two. Um, <clears throat> If you can't get the goal, get the celebration. If this didn't have three high visits and three in different photographers, it might have made a better shot. But I quite like the fact that virtually every supporter is cheering. Also, you get sometimes the players running towards you. If you're at an away game, it's best to position yourself in front of the away supporters so that if your team, sorry, the team who's playing away scores a goal, they're going to come and celebrate near to you. You get some action shots. This is one of the occasions where I was much, much closer to the corner flag. I'm not sure it's my favourite spot, uh, but this, I think, uh, yeah, this, this was Leicester. Um, this is middle of the pitch, so you do need a fairly uh, long lens. Uh, I'm not sure I've got the right gear. I've got a 300 mil. A lot of the professional photographers who are there will be using a five or a 600 mil plus others. I did want to get a shot of Schmeichel. My son-in-law uh, is uh, a football agent and he has a picture of uh, Schmeichel's dad saving. And I was hoping to get one of Schmeichel diving across to the top of the uh, left-hand post, palming it away. I was in the wrong position for this. But as you can see, it's normally very difficult to get that shot because you've got so many players in the way. Uh, it's unusual to get a player looking where he's thinking of putting the ball, but at least I think Vardy is here looking for an opportunity to get upfield quickly. Uh, this is one that was uh, possible for my panel, um, as long as I could have made sure there, were, there was nothing burnt out there. Uh, this was a picture that got port, bought. It's Leicester against Liverpool in the cup. This is Ian Acho was having a terrible run, but he did dispossess the goalkeeper who was trying to play footsie and score, but unfortunately there was somebody in the way uh, blocking off my view when he scored. Uh, when it's raining, sometimes it helps you. It tends to dim down the background. You do often get very cold and very wet when you're pitch side of football. It's nice sometimes to get, uh, this is Morgan here taking one for the team, which he did regularly. Um, in my view, you don't always have to have the ball in the shot, uh, but uh, in the end, I didn't include this. And this, have been quite a money maker. This is after uh, full time Leicester against Manchester City penalties. It's, I um, oh, can't remember his name. Anyway, <clears throat> he's obviously got the, the goalkeeper going the wrong way and he's Sterling. hitting over the bar. Thank you, Raheem Sterling. Thank you very much. Um, it's gone over the bar. If Leicester had won, and <laughs> emphasis on if because they didn't. I might have been able to sell this one because I was perhaps in one of the best positions to get that shot. Um, sorry, I've gone through that slide already. Okay, uh, I've jumped ahead with the football, so we're now talking about my second attempt at an A which was about um, 16, 18 months after the first attempt. Um, this time I decided to do a mixed panel, but at the time I didn't have my rugby uh, shots properly printed up and properly mounted. And um, I 
embarrassed to say I was still not ready because I should have had the rugby pictures mounted. Uh, the feedback was that there wasn't enough variety, there were too many divers. Um, Will Chung was there as an advisor on the day and he did particularly like the rugby images and was very encouraging. And I would say that, but for Will, I'm not sure I would ever, ever have got to uh, where I've got to now. He was very encouraging. Uh, so the feedback was, you're not ready, but uh, you're on the way. So what did I do? I, I took stock. I didn't feel as if I wanted to do that as a priority. And I went ahead and did quite a lot of work for the agency, carried on with ice hockey even after I finished my year. Probably need to explain, I stopped shooting officially for the uh, Panthers because it meant virtually every weekend, which meant it, it prohibited me doing a number of other events. And equally, we wanted to take more holidays, we retired, so I could not commit to being there every week. Uh, I also got feedback from a number of clubs uh, because I entered pictures in competitions. I should have put Clay Cross in, in there as well. Uh, I entered competitions. I hadn't really done that at uh, Cambridge. I had got information from the um, uh, Aperture Group criticising or sorry, commenting and advising and improving my pictures. Um, and also comments from external judges, which I found really useful and I submitted, started submitting printed images, which probably made the biggest difference. It showed up a lot of the problems that were hidden if I just uh, submitted a projected image, particularly if it was a heavy crop, it was clear that I hadn't got enough pixels to make a printed image. What had I learned? Definitely be prepared. Uh, I was encouraged to get more variety and it suited me because I wanted to shoot other sports. As I say, quality of images. The events I was then going to, rugby, swimming and football, premiership football, the lighting is much, much better. I did cover teams like uh, Derby County, Nottingham Forest, Wolves were in the, when they were in the championship where the lighting wasn't so good. Uh, but I think also my processing improved and certainly the noise reduction uh, skills improved. And I also by then had a printer. It's a Canon A3 Plus, which I've had a long time, it's second hand when I bought it from a member of Cambridge Club, and I love it. And I bought it with a, a bundle of papers, so I've learned a lot more about different papers, and I have improved my Lightroom photo shot techniques quite a bit. So in 2019, I should stress that picture from Stoke was my last but one uh, professional. Uh, photo shoot of football. Uh, daughter and son-in-law delivered twins in November of 2017 and they became my uh, priority. Quite often we get two or three days notice, an invitation to go down to Harpenton to see the twins. Well I think it actually means to look after the twins. Um, so I stopped effectively and concentrated on other types of photography. I wanted to get back to it this year but lockdown has stopped me. So in the meantime, it did make sense to try and have another go at uh, a panel. I re-established connections, but this time with the uh, East Midlands RPS. Went along to an advisory day to get an idea of what sort of uh, advice was being given and the quality of the images and the way they were displayed. Um, I attended a course on selecting and sequencing a panel and I would strongly recommend if you've not prepared panels that uh, you consider going to one of those. I thought it was excellent. I uh, got critique sessions both at uh, Matlock Camera Club and Chesterfield Photographic Society. A lot of support, a lot of uh, comments and a lot of advice on um, particularly on the quality of pictures and um, how I tackled the panel, the layout of the panel from Will. And I, uh, something else, by this time, I think I met Will once at the photographic show by accident. And his parting comment was, don't overthink it. And I think there is a danger of me always doing that. 
this is the panel that I had arrived at for the advisory day and um, I was quite pleased with it. I've included two cricket shots as you can see down there and uh, it's a mixed panel and one of the things I've tried to do is to balance them so the images, paired images are both the same size and um, um, ratio and the cent central images are the same width. Okay, uh, the assessors like the panel um, made one or two comments. I don't think they commented on this image, but one or two people there and during the critique sessions questioned whether this marker here should be in or not. Um, the assessors did say this was too close to the edge and I think basically the mounts that I'd had cut for me were more generous mounts than normal so they took off more edge than I was expecting and equally they felt that the gentleman's posterior needed more space. Uh, the cricket shots were questioned and I'll go back and have a look at the overall panel. Um, it was felt they, they, they stood out a bit, they didn't seem to fit all that well with the panel and equally the greens may have been a little bit off. Um, go back to this one, that was a reserve that I'd taken along. This is the other cricket image. Uh, this is the reserve, another reserve I'd taken along. So I was told, yes, do go ahead, do consider replacing the two cricket images, but opinion was divided. And I booked my assessment day, 23rd of October. Going back to the panel, these were the two, and even if you look at it here, they stand out a bit. But when I saw the most printed images on a row, there was something about the colour at the bottom and the way they balanced with the rest of the images that maybe wasn't perfect. Something I should have mentioned if you hadn't um, embarked yet, that it said that the panel is actually 16 images. The 16th image is your overall panel. Uh, something I perhaps should have mentioned, I decided to go for five, five and five. It seemed to fit the balance of my panel better than maybe a row of seven and a row of eight. So this was the alternative. Um, at that point, I started going through each image and Will said, whatever you do, make sure there's no problem with any of the images. So I went back to the original raw images reprocess them, made sure there was no over sharpening, no artifacts, no burnt out highlights, and that the print quality was up to what I would expect. And that took me quite a while. But that was what I decided to go with. And the final thing was, don't forget your greens, I've got there as a bullet point. Uh, Andy Smith did say, I think not all of these greens are quite right. And I spent probably a very long time working on whether I actually got them all right. I really don't know. So here we are. This is the panel. Uh, it's quite difficult to get a set of skaters that have got colours that work together, whereas these seem to work quite well. Uh, this is one of the divers. I, David Keat was very generous and gave me a one-to-one -one tutorial on his, his uh, workflow for Photoshop. And I must confess, I've used a little bit of dodging and burning around there to emphasize his, uh, his muscles there. Uh, also on this one, I've taken out lettering that was here. This is one of the pictures I'm least happy with. Here's that diving shot again. I've darkened it down. I've also spent a long time to, to make sure, it may not be obvious from your screens, but there are no burnt out highlights there. I did take out that little marker there. Um, I felt one of these was enough, but I didn't have another uh, skating panel, skating picture that fitted into the panel as well as this one did. Uh, once one of my heroes again, uh, but I quite like it. Obviously he's thinking, what am I going to do next? Am I going to go left? Am I going to carry on? The gentleman now has 
passing round for his uh, backside. One thing I will say is that I probably got a better hold of getting my exposures right, getting the processing so that actually the, the quality of detail here is quite good. And I did find sometimes that my camera was better focusing on very contrasty shirts than it was on the, the darker shirts that Panthers quite often wore. This is the only picture really that I planned in ahead and I practiced and I took a number of versions of it. Um, I have applied a very small amount of radio blur at the end to give it even more impact. This is the, uh, the other one that was commented on, so he's got pointing room up there. Another rugby shot. If you don't like the greens, Anne, Andy, I'm, I'm deeply sorry. Um, one of my heroes, Riyad, well, he used to be, Riyad Mahrez, who um, went on to greater things with Manchester City. This is my favourite shot of all. I went to the Olympic qualifiers and um, the, pick, the um, track was brand new. So whenever somebody fell off, they went out, checked the track first, then checked the bikes, and then finally checked the riders who'd fallen off. I did improve this. I've taken out the couple of characters here and changed the exposure quite a lot. But this is where I went up in the, uh, into the roof again, had a remote camera, but the, the uh, uh, focus is much better on this one. This I thought was a risky shot, a bit blurred. I've taken out the, the one entry, so no entry sign there, but uh, on balance, I think I should have taken that white line out, and there we are. And this is the final shot. I really was quite concerned about this up here. I thought I got rid of all of the uh, burnt out highlights and certainly using the fiber based gloss, minimize it if I had, but there could be an argument about this, this shirt here. So that was it, that was my panel. I revised my statement, took out a paragraph. Basically, it's, I am a sports photographer, but it can be a challenge. I'm trying to get key actions, uh, interesting, exciting actions, um, rather than perhaps portraits or background shots. On the day, I have to congratulate the Royal Photographic Society. It was sufficiently uh, serious. Uh, it's an excellent room for viewing the pictures. Men in white gloves came out and really carefully displayed the pictures. There was a hush of silence as that happened. Then the chairman plus four assists. I've got the feeling there might have been five at the previous one. Uh, and I checked out the um, experience of the photographers, all professional photographers, very experienced with a range of uh, interests, fine arts, weddings, portrait, dance, landscape, travel. I didn't find any that um, were interested in sport, but I think one of them uh, was quite keen on dance and there are similarities. Uh, finally, I'd say the prints were very well lit and displayed quite high. So my concerns about the bottom row, perhaps getting less attention or looking darker, uh, were un unfounded. Feedback on the panels, uh, other people's panels first. A surprising number were rejected, uh, mainly to do with the quality of mounting and printing, which I found really surprising. Uh, the advisory day I went to, uh, the, the L panels that have been submitted, I'd say the quality of 90% of them must have been better than the ones that were exhibited as A panels. I found that really su surprising. <clears throat> one, one panel, there was a recommendation to get the panels printed professionally, which I think probably meant that there was no objection to the, the pictures themselves. Uh, some were criticised for being too small and I was advised not to go too big and I did compromise. I can't remember the exact size, but they were smaller than I would normally have done. Uh, some of the statements were very long. And in two cases, I felt maybe they were almost an explanation of why some other pictures, some pictures that didn't seem to fit the panel had been included. Uh, my favorite was, I am a wedding photographer. Crunch time. Uh, I was worried about three images and when the assessors went up, one of them looked in detail at all three, very closely, in the right light, 
and I did fear the worst. Um, then the chairman asked the assessors to vote. Then he asked two to speak about the panel. One was very positive. That was the lady who uh, had photographed dance. She said, uh, I could see that an editor would be very pleased with any of these images. And the other person, the, uh, the nip picker, he wasn't a nip picker, but that seemed to be the role, uh, said they were sharp enough, which I presume meant not as sharp as they might have been. And the number 15 was the weakest image and then sat down. And I would agree with all of that. And then the chairman asked for the second vote and said the magic words that I passed. Uh, advice, your statement is key. Uh, you need to make sure that your pictures fit your statement, your objective, or if you've possibly done it the wrong way around, which isn't necessarily what I'd advise, that your statement fits your images. Um, the other bit of key advice is don't do, the, do it the way I did it. Speak to people who've done it. Uh, consider sending a sample of your panel into the RPS for feedback. They're very happy to do that. And read the rules on the RPS website for submitting your panel when you get to that point. Somebody I've not mentioned yet is Colin Smith from Matlock Camera Club who deserves practically all the credit for me having actually passed. He asked me if I read the rules and I've read the rules on the size of images, this, that and the other number of images, uh, but I hadn't read the final panographs that said you need to submit your images, I can't remember what it was, a week, a fortnight before, otherwise you will not be judged. And I thought getting them there the day before would have been fine, which meant I had a week to finish instead of three weeks. Luckily, I did manage to get them finished in time. More advice, if you're not in experience with panel sequencing, I would attend a workshop. Um, I, I found it really invaluable, even though I'm not very good at sequencing, but I might have been a bit better with my panel had I attended it. The advisory days I found to be great because not only do you hear what the advisors are saying, but you can get to see the images up close, which you can't do on an assessment day. And the, all of the people involved, including your friends and the people at your club, if you're a member of a club, want you to pass. Don't give them a reason, you give them a reason to fail you. And finally, I wanted to submit my panel projected and I was advised by everybody, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Um, I think the pass rate at the time was much, much lower for projected but uh, the RPS have invested a lot of money in a state-of-the-art projector, which projects uh, 4K. And I'm told by Ben, one of the uh, member of the uh, um, team, the distinctions team, that the results are very good. And um, for me, I think sport is better the bigger you see it. I attended a Tom Jenkins, I went to a Tom Jenkins exhibition of his prints and they were big and the impact is, I have his book of the, of the same images and they are good but you just don't, do not get the impact you get from seeing them big. Uh, I would advise you to try and get to see somebody else's images or your own images projected at Bristol which is probably quite difficult because the facilities are heavily used but that will be my final bit of advice. So thank you, and thank you to everybody who helped me, and thank you to all of you for watching. Thank you. I'll hand back to you, Stuart. Thank you, thank you very much. Mike, that was fantastic. Um, some super images. Um, if anybody's got questions, if you'd like to type them into the chat room, please, um, that would be marvelous. And while we're waiting for those to come in, I'd like to just mention a few uh, few things about the actual um, distinctions, Mike, if that's okay. No, please um, do. I, was, you would. I kind of I kind of disagreed with you about one aspect of it, where you said don't approach it the way I did, but I think you actually approached it in a very very thorough way. Um, there was a real difference between your first panel and your successful panel. So from 2014 to uh, 2019 i think you really did investigate the process very very well 
Um, the projected images you mentioned, you're absolutely right there. There was at one point um, a lot of advice not to go for that. But um, I think a lot of that was because people were submitting panels which maybe they hadn't quite got right on their screens. When you do print, you can obviously see the finished item. Um, what we see now at um, RPS um, Bristol when we're doing the projected um, panels is some very, very exciting work. And one of the problems I think people suffer is the sequencing. You've really, really got to get that sequencing right. But don't be put off by projected. And of course, at the moment, assessments are carrying on. Um, and they will be assessed on screen um, while we're in this period of uh, um, the COVID-19. Um, we've also started one-to-ones in a Zoom room like this. I've done some on the licentiate panels and they really do seem to be very popular. So if anybody is interested in that, if you just look on the RPS website and go to qualifications, and then go for dis go to distinctions and then look at the level that you're going for. You also mentioned about licentiate and um, licentiate we do get sports panels which are very very uh, interesting panels but obviously they have to meet certain criteria so don't be put off um, by thinking you can't do a licentiate in sport you most certainly can. And I think it's well worth doing because even if you've got, like you mentioned, you've got your city and guilds, um, I think now you've got to have done the qualification within the last five years to get the exemption. But by actually doing the process, you learn so much about what distinctions is all about. So that, that's, that's on distinctions. Um, one of the things that interested me was things have changed a lot, Mike. When I was shooting sports for a living in the 80s and 90s in uh, Suffolk, um, there were very few professional uh, sports photographers about, um, whereas now there seems to be a lot more. And at that time, we had a wireless internet called the Royal Mail. So we would have to post, <laughs> we would have to post prints out. Um, there was none of this sort of uh, hooking your camera into the system. You mentioned a few times that you felt that um, professionals didn't view. Did, did you feel as though you were a professional photographer when you were out on these events? Well, no, sorry, I, I should have made the distinction. With the cycling, track cycling in particular, it was for me, I, I got the press passes, but I was not taking them for an agency. If I'd been taking them for an agency, I'd have been there elbowing people out of the way if necessary. Okay. But, if, if it was me off my own bat, and you can get to lots of events uh, without having to supply your images to somebody else. And yep. cycling, it was true of cycling. Um, I've, I've shot basketball, and I do that off my own bat, but there I would elbow people out of the way. Okay. Um, I know if it's me do, doing it as my job, yep. uh, yes, I, I, I wouldn't give way, give way for anybody. No. I should also said with the uh, ice hockey, I made quite a bit of money out of being their official photographer, both from the paper and from the club and from selling prints. Um, but if you're shooting premiership football and if Getty, I'll get, basically Getty will get, if you're allowed to the four corners of the pitch, they will be automatically allocated wherever they want. And that's typically the four corners. Excellent. And they will probably have somebody else editing their images and sending them off. Okay. So your chances of earning money are only where you're near enough to an action that they haven't caught. So when, when I was photographing, and it was equestrian events I was photographing mainly um, for magazines like Absolute Horse and Horse and Hound, but they paid very, very little. Um, and we made quite a good living out of selling prints to uh, the, um, the um, athletes, the, the riders. Ian, Ian from Melton Mowbray asks how you um, worked out what to charge the agencies and the people for your photography. Uh, charging the agency was easy, they told me. Okay. <laughs> Basically, um, they would have an agreed tariff with whoever, and the, the agency I shot for, I think, mainly supplied Mirror Group, who, yep. who paid an amount. I don't think it was brilliant. Um, but then the agency would take a percentage, I can't remember what it was, probably 25%. I didn't bother 
really too much. Um, it was more that uh, I was building up my experience. Excellent. And did you sell many prints to people? The, the ice hockey, um, <laughs> my predecessor, Katie, her, I think her sister and her aunt, uh, used to man a, a desk at the Panthers and sell pictures. And I explained that I couldn't do that because I, I there's no way my wife would have gone along to every game and manned a desk. Uh, but he did arrange for members of the supporters club to sell images. I have to say during the first season, I focused on printing action shots. And in fact, most people wanted mug shots, literally on a mug or on a key ring. Um, but the big advantage when Katie was shooting, Panthers had a better team. She said she sold everything she had to sell when they won the league and the cop. Um, Panthers weren't doing quite so well. I think if I'd done another season, uh, it probably accounted for a third of the income selling prints. And although I said I didn't want to shoot the mascot, I realised fairly quickly that was one of the best earners because yeah. I got lots of shots of them coming out onto the ice. Um, so, yeah, I got money from prints for that. But uh, I haven't really bothered with the other sports. I've, I've relied on the agency. Fantastic. Thank you. Will you be working on a fellowship panel now? Um, I think it's probably going to stay sunny all afternoon. Um, I'm hoping it won't rain. So what was the question? <laughs> uh, <laughs> are you going to pop out in the sunny afternoon and shoot a fellowship panel? <laughs> I, um, I, I don't know. I've, basically, for me, I, I, I thought it was an OK panel. I, I, I like blurred pictures, so blurred sports people appeals to me. I might have a go at that. I don't know. I'm also, um, I've, I've been photographing a circus troupe. Uh, okay. Youngster is the Green Top Circus School in Sheffield, and it's been one of the most wonderful uh, projects I've ever done. And I was hoping this year that I would be photographing the troupe from start to finish into their performances, uh, but <laughs> they've been uh, furloughed, I'm afraid. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Scott, we... I noticed one question uh, which I would like to answer. Yep. Um, would I have got such good images if I'd been shooting? Uh, without press passes? And I'm pretty certain the answer is no. Yeah. Vince Scudden did an excellent presentation to Chesterfield Club. He may well have done it to some of your clubs as well, uh, where he says you can get good pictures uh, when without having press passes. That is true, something like tennis, you might well get some good results. Uh, but for me, I've shot uh, rugby at Chesterfield, and then came, it's probably in this order, Chesterfield, Cambridge, Nottingham, and then World Cup. And basically the, the athletes just give you that, that extra 5%, the intensity, the strength, the, just, just the whole thing about it, for me, made those images just that little bit better. Yeah, so are there any other questions on your chat feed, Mike? That, um, I know, that was the only one I spotted. Yeah, that's fabulous. Well, you've mentioned Anne Miles a few times. So I'd like to invite Anne to unmute herself and uh, say a few words about Michael Poole, um, associate of the Royal Photographic Society, please. Okay, I thought I might get landed in it. Thank you, Stuart. <laughs> yes, that was a great presentation, Mike, and it's so wonderful that you did stick at it. I can remember having to bolster you up just a little bit after that first distinction <laughs> advisory day. Uh, but you carried on, and I think that is the biggest example and the biggest thing that we can say in your favour. I mean, apart from the really good photographs that you achieved at the end of it, but uh, you didn't give up, you carried on, took on board the advice, even if a little, a few days later than it was given, but <laughs> you didn't uh, sort of argue with it after the event, and I, I think that was great, and, and you really are a credit, and I think... Uh, I hope you do go on to try something else for your fellowship. It will um, we'll be interested to see. <laughs> so thank you very much, Mike. I think everybody enjoyed that. And, uh, it's that's, good to see you, even at a distance. That's fabulous, Anne. Thank you very much. And I'd like to invite everybody to unmute yourselves and just give Mike a round of applause, please. <laughs> Well, Mike, that, that's fantastic. Can I, 
Yes, Can of I, course. I just say something then? <laughs> yes, Thank you very much indeed for the claps. It sounded like cow pats hitting the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Anne. Anne was long-suffering, encouraging me, I, and also Will Chung as well. So thank you to everybody who's supported me. Thank you. No, thank you. And thank you ever so much for your time, Mike, and thank you ever so much for joining us. Um, we'll be doing another talk in a few weeks' time, which I'll send you details of. Um, and I have asked Mike, and he's happy for this recording to go onto the uh, internet, so I'll send you a link to that once it's up as well. So, Mike, Thank you ever so much for joining us. It's been a super afternoon. Stay safe, everybody, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.